welcome to Movies, Films, and Flicks. I am Mark Hoffmeyer, and joining me is a man that's going to be running the entire time we record this episode. It's Robert Lamb. But only after I have uh, a cup of coffee first. <laughs> it's still kind of early for me. Well, yeah, I mean, you had a, your, you know, St. Patrick's Day was last night. So <laughs> yeah, so, drank a little bit. You're probably recuperating. <laughs> but yeah, no, thank you for joining me, man. You you joined me for the horror remake, reboot, prequel. Is that what it was, remake? Reboot yeah. episode, and uh, it did really well. And I, I just really enjoy, you know, you and I, we've been talking since 2015. I mean, we kind of started podcasting at the same time. So it's kind of fun yep. to have you on here and talk about the the data that I've accumulated and like some of the big hits we've had. And I mean, yeah, you're, especially like, I'm back to all the articles and stuff. Yeah, and and also too, I just want to say, everybody, uh, Robert over here is building an empire with uh, his Seven Lamb Productions. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, do you want to promote your stuff? I always promote your stuff at the end, but like you, you're every time I see you, you're like one million new views, one million new views, and I think it's so oh, yeah. awesome. We just crossed five hundred thousand uh, downloads for the past thirty days now, so like trying to get to a million every month. So <sighs> getting closer, getting closer. But yeah, I got a ton of different podcasts. They're all fictional stuff, or most of them are fictional. And uh, right now, I think Tower Four, which is our most popular one, that's it was in the top 10 on uh, Apple Podcasts of fictional uh, – in the fictional category. It was, like, number nine for a while. It might have dropped down to 11 now, but it's still – it's been, like, kind of fluctuating in the top 10 area, which is awesome. Dude, killing it. It makes me so happy. And when I first knew Robert, he was just kind of a regular-looking guy. A couple of years like ago – I have a beard now. <laughs> a couple of years ago, he started dressing like James Franco from Spring Breakers because he lives in St. Pete. Yeah. You know, St. Pete, Spring Breakers. And I would go, St. And now you're full-on yeah. Scarface. You have a huge yeah. recording area. I mean, just – you have a tiger out front. You're you're really – Or a lot of cocaine. You're and the... I know you're not supposed to get high in your own supply, but that's why I buy it from other people and I just use it. It's better that way. Well, then, yeah. So, you wait, you I buy put... it and resell it? Yeah, but I it's not technically like my supply. I'm just a middleman, so I feel like at that point I can snort all I want and it's not going to bug me, you know. Dude. Well, either way, man, this is awesome. Like you've you've come a long way uh since you started recording and a long way since we recorded a episode called Squid Lake that might be the weirdest episode I've ever recorded maybe in like 2016. That was a solid. But Yeah, that was a solid episode though. Well, this is cool, man. Like I'd already been so by the time this article came out that we're talking about today about Tom Cruise running and the more he runs the more money his movies make we i we had been knowing each other for three years and i had some yeah. pretty big hits in 2015 with my horror post but i think this was i know this is probably the biggest thing i've ever written i guess for any website i think my adam sandler jacked up piece was big but like this article man like when i i i got to, so i wrote this piece it came out i was just expecting it to be pretty good i wasn't expecting to to have it covered by everyone but then, like Vanity, Vanity Fair, Business Insider, EW, uh, um, pretty much every single like Runners Weekly covered it. Uh, like nice uh, slash film, Nerdist, Mental one, Floss, Mashable. What's up? Was this after the last one, the the one yeah. we recorded prior? This came after the horror remake one. Yeah, yeah. So, so then this. I mean, you had several, I know, before this one, uh, but I'm saying, like, when this one hit, it, like, blew up, mm -hmm. and then even, didn't you, like, Tom Cruise, somebody brought it up to him, right? Yeah, so Eric Davis, that video. he who brought me into Rotten Tomatoes in 2017 was talking to him, and Tom Cruise was like, yeah, it's really cool, and he's like, what people don't see is all my running behind the scenes, because, you know, he just sprints all day on these <laughs> movies, and also, yeah. too... Like, I think in 2014, he also retweeted my Edge of Tomorrow review. I remember I, I hadn't had any big hits yet. I was still full-time in the in the film industry, working comic conventions. I think I did 20 comic conventions that year and was working on sets. And all of a sudden, my phone just starts blowing up. And Tom Cruise retweeted my Edge of Tomorrow review. And so that was probably oh. the first big exposure I ever had. And it was pretty – I mean, I call it the blockbuster of summer, and I meant it. So it's clear why he retweeted it. But also, I was kind of like – they read this first, so I must have written – my writing must be somewhat legible to – Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 100%. To, to share, and that was just such a cool memory, and when I joined up with RT, this article got thrown around, and I tackled it, and I just went and rented every movie I could from the library, pulled from every movie I owned, went on uh, – uh, 
you know, streaming services, pulled every film I could from that. And I just rewatched all, and I just rewatched all those movies again for another assignment. But I pulled all the running moments. And it was a blast. I, you know, they say like when you like what you do, it doesn't feel like work. And I, dude, I loved just going through his so, filmography and staring at the screen and recording every running instance. But that's one thing I've always uh, wanted to ask. I don't think I have asked you is when you're doing your all this data pulling and, and stuff like that, and you're watching all these movies for a certain subject. Do, do you feel like it it takes you out of like the movie going experience? I mean, obviously you've seen a lot of these movies already, anyways. But I'm saying if you when you watch a movie, do you ever have to like I don't know what are the Tom Cruise movies? You're like, oh, I haven't seen Taps. Let's see if he runs in this. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, but I haven't seen Taps. And then you get lost in the story, and you're like, oh, I should be data researching right now. No, that's a great point, and I I, I never really felt that way because okay. you know I watch Taps, and I'm like, I'm happy I fast forwarded through this. Okay, there you go. <laughs> okay. It's good. And, you know, Endless Love. I just watched that, but he's only he's only so the first time we ever see Tom Cruise on screen in Endless Love, he's running playing soccer, then he just quits, which I kind of love. He's just run okay. for a brief amount of time. And fast forwarding through some of them wasn't really an issue. I will say though, I watched Born on the Fourth of July all the way through. I got caught up in, in several of them. But of the forty one movies I pulled, I never really fell out of it because for me it doesn't take me out of the movie going experience because I'm so excited when I find scenes. I'm like, oh my gosh, there's one. There's then, one. He's running. And then I have my, my stopwatch and then I, I actually pull the timestamps from the the uh, um, running itself because it's not totally exact with a stopwatch. But, right. you know, and then sometimes it's tough because he runs and then they cut away and then he runs again. So then you got to use a stopwatch for that. So it's kind of a, it was a tough job, but you really can't complain about watching Tom Cruise movies and pulling the moments when he runs. So it's just, I guess, I don't know, man. I, I hate, I feel like I'm just talking about myself here, but I, I always, when, oh. one thing that's helped me is I feel like there's subjects that people are like, man, Tom Cruise runs in a lot of his movies. So then I go, well, how far does he run? <laughs> like, how, <Right. laughs> how it, and that's been my bread and butter <laughs> is people have all these questions and then I just go, oh, okay, I'll answer them. Like, I just counted every explosion in a Michael Bay film. That's an article going up oh. for Rotten Tomatoes soon. So <laughs> that was the toughest assignment I've ever had. And I gave that was to myself. Yeah. Oh, dude. It's harder than Tom Cruise? Bro, uh, once you see the number of explosions, it became oppressive for me. Uh, it, wow. I mean, listen, it wasn't – well, not oppressive. It just became very time-consuming. You and just – you misspoke. You meant impressive, Impressive. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I pulled the timestamps for all of them because Jesus, I don't like I don't like the articles that you know, here's a chart with all the running, but there's no mm. proof of it. I know they don't want to give it away, but I'm always skeptical of those posts. So to prevent that, I pull like, I just did one where I counted every scream in the screen movies, and I pulled the timestamps for all the screams, and I shared it with everybody just to say, hey, this is what I pulled because. I don't. I don't want just people thinking. I'm co What's right. That? Yeah. Just in case people think like you're not putting in the work and stuff. Yeah, I'm just or copying like, somebody like, else. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just don't do that. So I went and pulled all the timestamps and just. But, but I do have. I do have some questions though. Like when you're pulling the data, at least like with not to cut you off right there, no, no, but no, 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 cut like, me off. Doing um, like say for instance the running, uh, and you say that when a like a camera shot cuts away or something like that, either to another scene or maybe it just cuts to a different angle. Like obviously that all plays into the fact of you're just monitoring how far he runs on the screen. So when it cuts away to a different shot, how do you know that's not like a different shot of him running in the same area? Or do you just tack that on? I don't know. There's like a lot of like, I feel like ifs and like whens with this kind of scenario. I just wonder how you like work through it. Yeah, so for me, I just wanted on-screen running. It's simple as that. Because when I – I remember when I first – my first big data article, I wrote a horror piece that exploded. And it got AV Club, Cabin in the Woods shared it. It got picked up. I, thousands of views just poured into my site. And, I, and instead of following that up with an easy post, I did this one with weighted averages and ugh, like inflated worldwide. And, and I put in six months of work, and then no one read it. No one cared. So yeah. for me, I figured, okay, I'm just going to watch his on-screen running. Because if they cut off of to, to him, 
and they go to someone else for 30 seconds and then they cut back to him. It's just, uh, there's, there's just too much being explained. So I just yeah, wrote. You're not, you're not adding in 30 seconds if he's still running. You're not adding those 30 seconds of the other scene into his running, right? Yeah, just on screen. So what okay. we see. Right. So, so okay. I just put what we see on screen is what I'm counting. And people can argue with that. But I don't think it would have changed the results all well, that much. Well, you do it the other way, I think that that you're taking a lot of liberties and kind of like making these assumptions. Because yeah. if there's a cutaway and then it cuts back to him and he's like running in a different area or whatever, but he's still kind of in that same moment of running, you don't know if he stopped in those 30 seconds to take a breather mm-hmm. or to like yeah. to get a drink of water and then started running again. And then that's when we cut back to him, you know? Absolutely. And you know what I noticed, too, is people don't mind with my data collection when I just explain. Well, everyone complains. That's why you don't Everyone's going to complain no matter what. Yeah. 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 But no well, there's a liberty in knowing that. There's a freedom in knowing that, actually. But I also just think when I explain what I do and where my – when I – when people can read it and go, okay, this is what he did. This is – okay, cool. He explained it. I get it. So once I do that, I feel like the majority of the – uh, what's the reasonable population? Mm-hmm. They they get it, and you know it's crazy. Like a lot of websites were like, "Oh man, like math figured it out." Because I just assumed he was running a six minute mile because he sprints in most of his scenes. He jogs in a couple, but then he sprints. So I said, "Screw it, six minute mile." And then right. I counted the seconds up to that, and then figured out how far he ran. So I just use really simple math that's easy to understand. But people dug it. They're like, "Science explains." I'm like, "I don't know if this is science, but." It's math, I guess. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you just have, well, uh, also, like, with, um, what is it, the Dead Meat podcast, uh, uh, or Dead Meat with um, James A. Janice yeah. or whatever, he, uh, sometimes he'll take liberties, like, with counting who dies and how they die and all that kind of stuff. And he's like, hey, I make the rules. I'm doing this thing, you know? <laughs> like, like it's yep. hard. Sometimes you don't know if a character dies or, or, or whatnot or if they're actually really dead or should he count zombies and sh- should he not count zombies. So, I mean, like, I feel like if you just establish the rules up front and just go, this is how I'm doing it, this is how I'm counting it, this is when I'm counting, and then, you know, I think at that point you're pretty, you know, free to do it your way. Yeah, absolutely. Just tell people. I think that's yeah. that's it. It's the same thing when I was managing conventions. If people will wait in line for four hours, if, you, if they feel like it's organized, they're cool with it. But once it's unorganized, then you get people complaining. So, yeah, just explain to people. Like, listen, I'm not counting this. And people go, okay, cool. At least there's an explanation for it. Well, that's what I get when I, like, release podcasts because sometimes I release slowly because they, the, the audio dramas I do take so long to come out. And there's there's so much work. So like every 20 minutes that you're listening to is really like 40 to 50 hours of editing and stuff. So I, uh, (laughs) I, I like try to tell people and I would give them this like calendar of like, this is when things are coming out. And, uh, when I couldn't meet, I was like, but it's a tentative schedule. I don't know if I can actually release them. And then, uh, when I didn't release on the day that I said there was going to come out, I got all these complaints. Hey, you said it was going to come out. Hey, you said it's going to come out. I'm like, you know what? I'm actually not going to do a schedule right now. Get caught up, and then uh, hopefully people won't be expecting it on a certain day. And while I didn't get as many complaints, it was still kind of like, well, are you releasing one? Are you releasing one? So I feel like it's just – I don't know. So I'm like, I'm going to just establish from now on the episodes come out once a month. There you go. I don't know when, but they'll be out every month. So now people just kind of are like, okay. Like they just kind of get it for the most part. There's still people who complain. Yeah, no, and that's smart, man, because if you give a date and you don't meet that date, then you just oh, – that's when yeah. people get annoyed because you promise something and then the promise isn't met. Yeah. And there's that disappointment. So it's – I think you, you totally did the right thing. In a perfect world, people would understand that calendars get pushed, but right. you kind of got to learn to <laughs> – that's not a perfect world. With, yeah, um, well, that's the thing is I started even writing tentative schedule like in my schedules just to say like, hey, some of this might get pushed back. 